Hello there everyone, Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com and welcome to Getting Sketchy Live. What is Getting Sketchy? Well, it's just a fun 30 minutes where we attempt to sketch a subject, a simple subject, inside of a time frame, 30 minutes. Now the whole point here is to improve our drawing skill through practice, of course, but also to improve our drawing speed as well. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be breaking the subject down into basic shapes, drawing quickly and loosely using our entire yar arm, not our yarn, um, and we're gonna be concentrating on the basic shapes and then slowly we'll get a little bit more detailed, but we're gonna keep the, the drawing loose, thus the name getting sketchy. Uh, if you enjoy this kind of thing, I would encourage you to check out our membership program over at thevirtualinstructor.com where we've got tons of extensive video courses on drawing, painting, watercolor painting, acrylic painting, oil painting, pastels, portrait drawing. There's a bunch of stuff over there. Plus, there are weekly live lessons that I broadcast the members. Now, the weekly live lessons um, are where we go a little bit more in depth, not a little bit more in depth, we go way more in depth in materials and processes. We create finished pieces of artworks over the series, over several weeks. Um, this is a little bit different what we're doing here. We're just drawing loosely and quickly. We're having a lot of fun. We're just sketching tonight. So uh, I'd like to welcome everybody in the chat box. I see people are already chiming in here. So uh, I'm glad to be here with you guys this week. And uh, if you're ready, let's go ahead and dive into this one. So let me go ahead and switch over to the main camera. If you look up there in the upper left-hand corner, you can see the photo reference that I'm working from. This is a photo from pixabay.com, which is a great resource uh, for copyright-free photographs. Um, you can go over there and create a free account and start perusing their library of images. You'll see the timer up there in the upper right-hand corner. It says 18 minutes and, and 30 seconds right now. Don't worry, that doesn't count. We haven't officially started the drawing process yet. I will reset that timer when it's time to do so. We are gonna keep the drawing process to under 30 minutes. Now, I should preface that by saying that you, you cannot create a real finished drawing inside of 30 minutes. I know that there are a ton of time-lapse videos out there, especially on YouTube, and I'm, I'm pretty guilty of putting a few of those out there as well, but um, that kind of makes people think that the drawing process is a really quick process, and uh, it requires some magical talent that you have to produce these types of drawings. And that's not really the way things work. Drawing is a skill that anyone can learn. It's not necessarily a talent that you're born with. And it requires a lot of practice to get to the point where you can draw accurately, but still, even still, drawing accurately, accurately um, and to a high level of degree takes time. So um, it's not a quick fix as my dogs are going berserk in the background. So if you hear my dogs barking, <laughs> forgive those poor canines um, because <laughs> they know not what they do, I guess. They know they're barking. <laughs> what am I talking about? All right, um, so anyway, even though we're creating a quick sketch here, please know that if you're wanting to create a more finished drawing or painting, it's gonna require a time commitment. It's not unusual if I'm creating a drawing that's about this size, this is about nine by 12 or somewhere around there, that would, it would take me probably about anywhere from five to 12 hours to complete a fully rendered drawing, even with just graphite. So even though we're just creating sketches here, just, just know that the drawing process actually takes a long, longer portion of time than what we're, we're, we're doing here. Um, here's another look at the photo reference here. I've got mine printed out. I'm going to be looking at it throughout the process. I'll remind you that drawing is at least 50% observation, where I believe it's at least 50% observation. So I'm gonna be going back and forth between my photo reference and uh, my drawing paper making marks based on what I see. Uh, so we're gonna basically start with kind of an elliptical shape here. It's almost like an oval. And from there, I'm just gonna branch out with the other basic shapes that I see here. I'm gonna break this crab down into basic shapes, and then once I've got the basic shapes in place, we'll go back and add as many details as we possibly can within 30 minutes, and also uh, a bit of value or shading. Value, if you hear me talk about value tonight, which you will, I'll talk about value a lot, um, is basically, I'm just basically referring to the process of adding shading. Value is the darkness or lightness of a color. Um, and of course we can see there's lots of darkness and there's lots of lightness in here and a, a variety of different grays in between. 
All right, let's put this off to the side here, and uh, I think we'll get ready to start the timer and start the drama. But before we do, this week I'm going to turn the big mic around and go ahead and get it in position so I can talk in a deep voice. <laughs> um, that's just so you can hear me when my head's down. All right, are we ready? I think we're ready. Let's go ahead and start the timer. All right, so we've got 30 minutes up there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start, just as I said, with kind of an oval shape, somewhat of a, maybe a uh, elliptical shape. It's really more of an oval shape. It doesn't have to be perfect. And we can see here on the crab that the back end of the body kind of dips down just a little bit. Um, and it, it, you just heard me say it doesn't have to be perfect, and that's important to note. Uh, even if you're creating a more polished finished drawing, you're never going to create a drawing that is perfect. It will not happen, it never has happened, and it never will happen. So uh, let go of your perfectionism and uh, allow for little mistakes and little inconsistencies to happen in your drawing. Um, and I say that, but we should always be trying to make our drawing as perfect as possible, but realize that it's not going to be. So if we spend too much time trying to make everything perfect, we'd never get anything finished, right? So uh, we want to try to make it as close to perfect as possible, but understand that perfection is not possible. Let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit closer here. Since I made my initial sketch a little bit smaller, just want to make sure that you can still see the reference up there as I continue with this. All right, so now I'm going to look at the edge here of the crab's body and just start building out uh, a few of these shapes for the arms here, starting with the, the bigger arm here. And I'm, I'm using, I didn't mention this at the, at the start, but I'm using a mechanical pencil, and this mechanical pencil has 2B graphite in it. Um, so I, can, I, like, I like working with 2B graphite um, when I'm using this mechanical pencil because it gives me the ability to make light marks with a light touch, but I can also make darker marks by adding additional pressure. Now that's not gonna work for everybody. Some people are going to have a little bit of a heavier hand and maybe require the use of an HB pencil. And some people are going to have a little bit more of a lighter hand and are gonna to want to use a darker pencil like maybe a 4B pencil. All right, so again, just looking at basic shapes here. There's nothing fancy, no magic going on here at all. And you can see I'm drawing pretty loosely here too. Just drawing several lines. We can always go back and define the contours with more defined lines once we've got uh, some of these basic shapes in place. So don't put too much pressure on yourself to, to say, oh, I've got to, I've got to draw a perfect line here. I can't tell you how many people I speak with and they say, well, you never teach me how to draw. I can't even draw a straight line. And they say it just like that, too. It's <laughs> the only people I talk to is John Wayne. Um, and that's, that's, that's good that you can't draw a straight line. I don't think anybody can draw a straight line. That's not how you draw. That's not the, the point of drawing. Um, when, we're, when we're drawing, we're, we're just observing. And we're just making marks based on what we see. We're taking a best, best guess of what we're seeing as far as the shapes go and uh, the lines and the values and and the colors and so on. All the elements of art is basically what we're looking at when we're creating a drawing. And we're just recreating those elements on our drawing paper. Uh, okay, instead of addressing the legs down here, I'm gonna switch over to this side. Because I'm right-handed, I might smear some of my lines if I continue to work around there. So I'm just gonna consider that. Now, when I'm trying to determine where I'm going to make the next claw come out, um, I think I've got a minute or two to, to show you this. Um, when you kind of, I'm looking at this oval shape that I created here, and I'm kind of looking at the relationship of where this this claw begins. And on the feet, it might be hard to see because it's in shadow, but it kind of starts a little bit about right here. So that's where I'm going to start the next shape. And those are the kind of things that I'm looking for when I'm creating a drawing, any type of drawing. And we can kind of look at the relationship between the spaces, um, and more specifically, the positive and negative spaces as we're creating this drawing, as we're laying out the, the basic shapes, and uh, make comparisons. 
So we'll just bring that back in around with a slight curve. And I know the crab here is a little bit random. <laughs> But that's cool. I, I like crabs. I think they're interesting animals. They're they're kind of like uh, they're kind of like spiders with claws or something. I don't know. Um, anyway, I'm noticing already that um, if we look at the space in between this claw and this claw and compare it to the space in the reference, you can see that either my claws are too big for the body or the body is too big or too small for the claws. One of those two things is going on here, but you know what? I'm going to keep going because I know that it's okay to be imperfect and I am under a time constraint. But I should point out that it's, uh, it's probably going to be okay in the final drawing. It's probably not going to be a big deal. There's probably not going to be some crab official that comes in and says, well, that that species of crab, uh, that has a much wider body than what you've drawn there. Again, <laughs> the crab expert is also going to be like some weird version of John Wayne. <laughs> All right, so we'll draw the segments on this side. Um, even though we know that the, the width of the body of the crab is off a little bit, but that's okay. It shouldn't make too big of a deal. Um, but anyway, I like crabs. I think crabs are cool. When, whenever we go to, uh, the beach, um, we, I always take my kids out ghost crab hunting. And, uh, <laughs> what that basically means is we, we run around on the beach in the dark and look for these little tiny sand crabs, I guess they're sand crabs, and then we catch them in a bucket, usually about, uh, you know, we'll probably catch about 10 or 11 of them somewhere in there, and they all are in the bucket while we catch all of their buddies, and then we all let them go at one time, and then, of course, the crabs run everywhere, and the kids run everywhere, and it's a lot of fun. But they're called ghost crabs because they're very hard to see in the dark. Okay, so you can see here my leg over here as I'm telling my ghost crab story. I got a little out of control. It went a little too far outside. And the way I know that is because I compared this edge of this foot to where the bottom foot of the, or the bottom, the bottom por portion of the crab's leg should be. And uh, I had just made it way too far out. So uh, we'll go ahead and erase that and fix that one. So you have to kind of choose your battles there when it comes to what you're going to keep and what you're going to what you're going to change. In a drawing, yeah, there we go. It's a little bit better. It's a little bit more accurate. And then we'll just drop down to the next segment. And I had debated um, on maybe adding 15 minutes to our 30 minutes. And then instead of doing this all in graphite, um, draw in pen and ink. And we'll do that again in the future. But uh, so far we've only done one pen and ink drawing with, with this series, this live series on YouTube. Um, and we'll revisit pen and ink, I'm sure, in the future again for a sketchy series. But pen and ink drawing does require a little bit more attention and a little bit of a slower approach. And this crab is fairly detailed and fairly complicated as well. It, does, it might not seem like it on the surface, but it is a little bit more complicated. All right, so our hind leg here overlaps a little bit. And this is still all very, very loose. These lines that I'm making are, are not the final lines. I'm going to go back over and uh, enhance the lines that, I've, that I'm drawing right now. These are still just kind of loose, loose marks and shapes that are giving me a nice base on which I can start uh, developing the details. And still keeping things relatively loose. I said we were going to draw with a whole arm, and then 
that all went away after we drew <laughs> drew the original oval uh, because then we started getting into these little segmented legs here. Which these guys are fun. There we go. All right, now we'll just continue working our way around on this side here. And you can see I added a little bit more to the bottom of the body right here because that's what's happening in the reference. So drawing is a skill that anyone can learn, and I know that there are people out there that, that, that upsets them to know that other people can learn how to draw, especially if you've been drawing for a long time, you've been drawing for all of your life, and you, you think, well, I don't want other people to know that they can learn how to draw. <laughs> <laughs> because then I won't be as special. And now I'm just kidding, <laughs> kidding with all that stuff. But um, I don't know why some people are resistant to that idea that anyone can draw. There, there are there's a lot of folks that I talk to, you know, outside of our membership program or outside of visitors to the website who, um, who I'll get in arguments with over. Um, the ability to draw and I'll tell them that anyone can learn how to draw even you and they're like oh come on I can't learn how to draw those are the people who say they can't draw a straight line uh, but the fact of the matter is anyone can learn how to draw because it, drawing is a skill and but I don't know why people get upset over that I don't I mean people get really heated over that when when I say that you can learn how to draw, and anybody, in fact, can learn how to draw, people it drives them absolutely crazy. And I don't understand that. I don't understand why people don't want to allow other people <laughs> to be able to draw. Or maybe they're just making excuses for themselves, and they want to believe that since they believe they can't do something, then they're right. But I think that's true of anything that you want to do in life, not just drawing and painting, but uh, anything you want to do within reason, you can, you can learn how to do and you can become very, very good at it. If you have the passion and you seek out knowledge, then just about any skill is attainable by anyone. Now, of course, there are some limitations. Sometimes there are physical limitations that prevent people from doing certain things and, um, and following certain paths. As I'm adding this segment of leg, I can really see how off my proportions are from the body to the legs that I'm adding. Again, in the end, I don't think it's going to be a big deal. Um, I don't think it's going to uh, make the drawing look weird or anything. It, it's going to look, uh, you know, you can clearly make comparisons there and see that this this part of the body needs to be wider compared to the claws that are coming out. But I don't think it's going to be that huge of a of an issue in the final drawing. All right, uh, I'm going to go ahead and give this pencil a quick sharpen, and then we'll go back in and start enhancing the line quality and adding a little bit of value here. Um, imperfection okay. I said laces out. Yeah, imperfection's okay in drawing, <laughs> not in everything, okay? If you work at a nuclear power plant, you probably need to be perfect at your job. <laughs> but when it comes to drawing, there's, and the reason why I say that about perfection is because so many people, when they're drawing and painting, and even so many teachers, there's a lot of teachers out there who are all about being perfect, in a drawing or a painting. And there are so many students that feel like they've got to have everything perfect. And you know what happens? It makes drawing and painting not fun. And when you're not having fun, then you stop doing it. You lose the passion for it and you never improve. And if you're having fun, you do it more often and you love it. And as a result of doing it more often and loving it, you get better. So you have to be real careful with the per perfection thing, and you have to be real careful telling people that what they draw or paint has to be perfect. Because it doesn't. 
and it won't be. Okay, just adding kind of that inner line that happens around the edge. There is a little bit of contrast that happens, especially on this side, since the light source is basically coming from almost the bottom right portion. Okay, let's go ahead and start enhancing some of this line quality. Then we'll go back and uh, add some, some value quickly in shading. So uh, line quality is the thickness or thinness of a line. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to make some of the lines a little bit thicker. And in essence, that's going to make some of the lines appear a little bit smaller or thinner. So we have uh, some variety. And in the process, I'll add a few details around the edges. And whenever you're creating any type of line drawing, you want to consider line quality. You want to make sure and make sure that you include a full range or a, a variety of different lines in your drawing. as the dogs begin to go crazy again in the background. I don't know if you guys can hear them or not. There. <laughs> They've stopped for the moment. Oh, I spoke too soon. All right, so you can kind of see how that claw is standing out a little bit more. Um, and it's a little bit more interesting with the added variety in line. And let's see how we're doing on time. 13 minutes. Okay. So we're over halfway through this drawing. And I think this one's going to be kind of close. It's going to be kind of under the gun for this one. I could go a little bit quicker, I guess. I guess I'm kind of drawing a little bit slow tonight. But that's okay. Remember what I said at the beginning, you know, if we're creating a finished drawing, it's going to take a lot more time. But this is a sketch and uh, a loose sketch and we should be having some fun while we create it. Here we go. And once we've got these lines enhanced, we'll go back and start adding a little bit of tone here and there and uh, try to make this crab appear a little bit more three-dimensional. So make him have a little bit of a more of a furry edge here. <laughs> make those lines a little bit more jagged. There we go. And so if we were drawing this with pen and ink, we would definitely spend a lot of time dealing with the line quality. Even with a graphite drawing, though, by varying the line thickness as we go around, it makes the drawing much more interesting. And, of course, we can, you know, manipulate the line quality to help create the illusion of form and uh, create the illusion of a light source, even without any shading or value. And the way we would do that is by making the line a little bit thicker on the opposite side of the light source or in the areas where the object or part of the object that gets, gets a little bit thicker. So since our light source is coming from the bottom left, we could just leave this line up here nice and thick and let this line down here on the bottom be a little bit broken. And that helps to uh, kind of create that illusion of a light source using only line, which is pretty cool. All right, we've got 11 minutes. This is going to be so tight, guys. This is the one time where I think <laughs> I think I might not make it. We go a little bit quicker now. <laughs> This crab is more complicated than I thought. All all its little all its little legs. <laughs> I 
I think if the crab just had two legs like all the other normal animals on the planet. <laughs> I'm just kidding, of course. I know that. I know that most animals have four legs. <laughs> I'm just kidding there, too. Uh, poor centipedes are like, what is he talking about? We've got, like, a lot more than four legs. That's how centipedes talk. <laughs> I guess. All right. Uh, I need to, to focus here on my lines and uh, so I can get to the value. And this value is going to be quick, super quick. All right. All right, now let's start adding some of the shading. Again, I mentioned that the light source is kind of coming from the bottom uh, right-hand corner. So I'm going to start up here and start adding some of the shading on the left side of this claw. And I'm going to go fairly quickly with this because of how much time is left. I want to get enough value and information here uh, on the surface so that we can kind of get an impression of form. And guys, I truly apologize for the dogs barking if they are driving you folks crazy because I know they're driving me crazy <laughs> right now. Um, and of course, I can't get up and go see what their problem is, but there's, there's clearly something bark-worthy going on out there. All right, so I'll make the end of the claw dark. And you can see it kind of gets a little bit lighter there around the edge. So we'll just leave a little bit of lighter tone there. And then we've got this cast shadow that kind of makes its way up and around the, the edge there. There we go. And then we'll just continue working our way around here. And remember that value is really all about contrast. So we understand a dark value because we have maybe lighter values around it. Uh, so we understand this dark value that I'm adding right now because of the white of the paper and the middle midtones and lighter values around it. So um, keep that in mind that you can always make a value appear darker by adding a lighter value around it or having a lighter value around it. You can make a value appear um, the opposite. <laughs> you can make a value appear lighter by put positioning dark values around it. Um, good question. The reference photo will be available. Um, on the blog. I've edited this image a bit, a little bit, not much. But again, you can you can pick up the photo reference over at pixabay.com. Uh, the, the original photo reference does not have, um, I mean, it has color. It's not in black and white, I should say. So you just head over there and search for crabs. You'll, you'll see it. You'll see the, the image I'm using. Um, I won't have this up on the blog for a couple days. Right now I'm in the middle of working on 25 Days to Better Drawings, which is the next course for members of the website. Um, and so I'm putting all of my focus and energy in that right now. That's why I haven't posted uh, one of the longer free lessons here on YouTube in a while, because I've been uh, really focused on, on content for members. Which is normal, but uh, right now I'm in the middle of finishing up a course. So uh, it's kind of the crunch time, if you will. And we got five minutes left, and I tell you what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give these dogs a piece of my mind <laughs> when I'm done here. If you guys can't hear them, I don't know, I don't know why you wouldn't be able to hear them, but they're driving me crazy right now with their crazy barking. All right. 
So we've got one half of the legs in place. Uh, let's go ahead and add some tone to the shell here. And this is, there's a lot of variety here in the value in, in the shell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of make uh, an initial pass here with kind of a middle to light value. And then I'm going to go back and make some of the areas a little bit darker. And I tell you what, I know, I know that we're supposed to be trying to complete this drawing in 30 minutes and all that jazz. I don't think I'm going to finish it in 30 minutes. It's going to be close. But I'm going to go ahead and continue on past, past the timer. <laughs> if, if I need to. But it's looking like right now I'm definitely going to need to. So um, I'm going to continue on a little bit a little bit longer um, instead of being real strict with the 30 minutes. We'll say draw a crab approximately 30 minutes drawing exercise. <laughs> I like that. Approximately 30 minute drawing exercise. Okay, so I'm just using the side of the pencil here may not look like it. it, may look like I'm using the tip of the pencil, but I'm not. I'm using the side of the pencil to kind of get these softer marks. And just basically bringing it all the way down, even over the top of the areas where the value is a little bit lighter. Um, if you want to, if you need to make a value a little bit lighter in an area where you've applied graphite, all you have to do is go in with like a kneaded eraser and you can like lift it up. So it's a little bit lighter on this side. So we can always do that. We can go in and draw with a needed eraser too and lift out color or lift out value. All right, so let's go in here and start making some of the values a little bit darker. And right along this front edge, we've got some of that darker value happening up there. So I'm making small circular strokes here to kind of create or try to create an even application with the graphite pencil so that we have uh, we don't have kind of stark changes in tone and value and also so we don't have like real obvious uh, strokes. You know our initial strokes were uh, I kind of tried to fl flow around the front form of the the shell of the uh, crab. But now that I'm making another pass with the graphite, I'm, I'm going a little bit slower and I'm trying to make circular strokes with the pencil to create more of an even application. We're still going to work fairly quickly here and still loose. So even though I'm going to extend the time that I'm working on this, I'm still going to, to stay fairly loose with the application. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time getting all of those details in the shell. But we can make these little, there's these little dots and things where the value gets slightly darker. Just kind of creating a little bit of an impression of form. And then we'll keep working around here. And each one of these little indentions that kind of stick out, they've got a little bit of darker value associated with them right on the edge. So we'll go in there and add that. And then right up here too. And this technique that I'm doing right here, adding the value, um, is just creating small circles. I've heard some folks refer to this as circling before, or, or it's, it really is kind of circling. But I've heard some folks call, refer to it as circleism. And if you look up circleism, it, circleism <laughs> is a completely different thing. Circleism is basically where you're creating an image out of circles. 
Um, and this isn't the same thing. I'm not making small circles. I'm making small circular strokes. That is different. Um, I'm moving the pencil around in a circular motion, but still kind of using the side of the pencil to uh, make the mark. So if you're watching the timer, 12 seconds, not gonna not gonna make it tonight, but that's okay. I'm gonna keep going because I'm a cheater. <laughs> I'm an art cheater. <laughs> We're almost finished anyway. We're almost finished with this sketch. Probably another five minutes or, or less. You know, it, and that that just makes me even more glad that I decided not to do this in pen and ink. 45 minutes wouldn't have been enough time. Just to create the sketch. Now, if this was a more finished and polished drawing, of course, I would spend a whole lot more time. And, uh, you know, just on the shell alone, I could end up spending a couple of hours just with all the details and things. Just like I talked about at the beginning. That although we're quick, creating a quick sketch here and having a bit of fun, if we're going to create a finished drawing, it's going to take a little bit more time. And I don't want to give you the impression or, or make you buy into the belief that creating art is, is something that happens quickly, because it's not. All right, these tones up here are pretty dark. We could actually make them a little bit darker. I don't know how far I'm gonna go with this, making it a little bit darker. Maybe we'll just make it slightly darker. There we go, I think that's good enough. Let's, let's go ahead and finish off this side with some value. I don't know. I don't think the width of the body of the crab is going to be a big issue here. Uh, just like I suspected, even though hopefully I hope you can see the discrepancy there. Because there is a discrepancy. We're off, We're off just a bit there. I'm off just a bit there on the size of the shell. in comparison to these claws. So I'll make the, the end here a lot darker. And you can see the end of my pencil is almost completely flattened. And that really creates a nice surface to create some of these, these medium values and cover a larger area quickly. These medium to light values. Quick and loose. All right, we'll go inside here. Again, our light source is kind of originating from the bottom right. So that means the left side of these of these different pieces of the crab are going to be uh, darker in value, and the right side is going to be lighter in value. But even on this, even still, we still have some parts of the crab that are darker, so they still need to be darker, even though they're in in light. And I'm sure you know that. I'm sure you don't need me telling you that. So add a little bit of texture there with just a few quick marks here. Just mimicking the texture that I kind of envision, or not envision, actually see <laughs> on the body of the crab there. On the leg of the crab there, I should say. And as I'm drawing this crab, I'm starting to get hungry for some crab <laughs> no I'm just kidding um, 
I don't think anything about this crab looks appetizing. Um, clearly, because it is not cooked yet. <laughs> uh, once it's cooked, maybe it'd be more delicious. All right, so just a couple more legs, and then I'm actually going to um, add just a little bit more of the cast shadow around the bottom because it, as we're kind of filling in some of the remaining areas of tone, we can see that the crab, hopefully you can see the crab kind of looks like it's floating there in space. And um, we'll ground it with a little bit of the cast shadows that are happening there. And that'll make it make a little bit more sense. And also help to make it look three more three-dimensional actually. We'll do that quickly. Boy, I was way off on my estimates of how, <laughs> how long this would take. I thought, oh, this crab's way more simple than the bird that we did last week. And we had a couple of seconds to spare with the bird. Surely we'll, we'll get this done. All right, so there's the basic <laughs> crab. Now let's add some of those cast shadows. And I'm basically just going to look at the shape of the cast shadow um, that happens up here right behind the first claw. And just kind of allow that shape to come around and then fill in that value. Fill in that shadow. And we'll just let the strokes kind of flow around with the shape of the shadow. Here we go. We got a little bit of shadow on the inside here. And of course, this is all cast shadow. So cast shadow is different from core shadow. Core shadow is the shadow that actually exists on the subject. And cast shadow is shadow where uh, light is, or it's air, there are areas where light is prevented from hitting because something is in the way, blocking the light, clearly. But cast shadows can happen on actual objects or they can happen on the surface. And just as the name implies, they are cast onto those surfaces. But core shadows are the shadows that actually exist on the subject. So we can have core shadows and cast shadows right next to each other or in a similar location in some cases. We'll make some of these shadows a little bit darker in there. As our quick sketch is becoming not as quick as originally planned. <laughs> so if you're unsure of the light source in any drawing that you're doing, but you're drawing from observation, all you have to do is just pay attention to the shapes of the shadows, and uh, you, you'll usually be pretty accurate um, in your drawing because of the shape of the shadows. If you just trust what you see, which for some people is very hard to do, but you can see up here, this, we got this kind of this cast shadow that comes out. It's kind of wacky up here on this claw on the right. But it's what happens in the reference. And if we capture it in our drawing, then it should read fairly accurately. Here we go. And we'll just keep working around. I'm actually working my way towards the bottom of the picture plane because I'm trying to avoid any smearing that could happen with the palm of my hand. And if you have some areas that are starting to get lost because of the shadow, just go in and make the, the cast shadow a little bit darker. And that should resolve the issue should make things stand out a little bit more. Remember that whole contrast thing I said uh, with contrast and value. We can make values look lighter, 
by putting darker values next to it. Well, the same thing's true for making things stand out. If you're losing something, especially if it's um, something of importance, you can just add some additional contrast and that usually makes it stand out and you don't lose it anymore. All right, so we've got a, another funky cast shadow right here. Kind of coming down right underneath this leg here. And boy, the when this photo was taken, it must have been later in the day because the shadows are fairly long for such a small little creature here. <laughs> Longest one second I've ever seen. Yeah, somebody tell that person that we're extending the time. <laughs> There's one second remaining. I don't know if we're going to make it. <laughs> oh. Let's see. It's this is going to end up being more like uh, 45 minutes, just like I I had originally thought it would take with pen and ink. <laughs> Sometimes things are a little bit more complicated than you think you are. They are, and I probably could have drawn a little bit quicker to to meet the 30 minutes. But you know what? This is a game where it's okay to cheat. <laughs> no one gets hurt. Right? No, nobody's hurt out there. <laughs> nobody was, I hope nobody was betting <laughs> on whether it, I would get finished or not within 30 minutes. Not that I'm trying to encourage that from, uh, encourage that to start. All right, so I, I was wisely working my way down the paper, but then I did the uh, left, the right side first, even though I'm right-handed, which was not as was. All right, just this cast shadow right here, and then we'll be finished with this one. Finally. <laughs> but hopefully, some of you are drawing alongside or are planning to draw alongside at some point in the future with this uh, lesson. And uh, you should take your time. You shouldn't, shouldn't try to do it inside of 30 minutes anyway. So you should take your time and create a, create a great sketch. Doesn't have to be a finished drawing. Remember, every time that you're, you're creating a sketch, even if it's a quick sketch like this, you're still working the same muscles, the same art muscles that you would be working if you were creating a more finished drawing. So the more you can sketch, the more you can take the time to practice like this, the more you're going to see your drawing skills improve and uh, the quicker you'll see them improve. It just requires practice. All right, so uh, there's our crab there sitting on the paper. I uh, finally finished after I don't know how long. I guess it was probably about 45 minutes or 40 minutes. Um, I don't know the official time because the countdown just goes 30 minutes and then it stops. But uh, anyway, um, so let me take a quick look at the chat box here. Um, Matt, would you please spell the website the picture is at or will that be in the blog as well? It'll be in the blog as well, but it's uh, it's spelled right underneath there for you. Um, do you have any more tips for pastel painting? I've got loads of pastel <laughs> tips for pastel painting. In fact, I have a video on pastel tips. Um, I, that's one of the free videos, so you can check that out on YouTube or on the website at thevirtualinstructor.com. But I have an entire course on pastel painting too, so you should probably check that out over at thevirtualinstructor.com again. Hey Matt, do you think the best way to practice is to make a weakness list and improved based on what's on the list. Um, you could do that. I think that's kind of a negative approach to, to drawing because you're basically pointing out all the things that you're doing wrong and the things that you want to focus on improving. You can do that um, if you want. Another thing to do is maybe 
focus on what you're doing well and make notes of the things that you're doing well in each drawing that you do and uh, keep those things in mind because the next time you create a drawing, you'll be sure to do those as well. It's fine to look at a drawing and criticize it and point out the things that you didn't do as well as you should have. Like for example, I talked about the, the width of the shell of the crab when I was drawing it. That's something that I took note of as I went through. And if I was to draw this crab again, I would make sure that the, the size of the shell was the appropriate size. But again, I'll also in my next drawing, um, concentrate a little bit more on the proportion because I know that I got off on this particular drawing. So uh, I think it's a good idea to recognize your weaknesses, but focus on your strengths. So hopefully that, uh, that answers your question. So when you sketch, you must simplify stuff and try to understand it, I guess. Oh, yes, you're getting there, David. Absolutely. Um, drawing is about observation. And the more we observe a subject and look at it, the better we understand it. Um, and or understand it visually anyway. I have no idea how this crab works, <laughs> but I understand how it looks. And um, the the more you draw, the more you understand the objects that you're looking at, and you have a better idea of how to draw them and capture them in a drawing. We're creating an illusion in a drawing, after all. Um, and it's all about capturing the elements of art that we see: line, shape, form, value, color, texture, and of course, we create the illusion of space as well. So, uh, let's see. But I like to take the approach of simplifying things and then building things back up with detail. Let's see. It looks great. Thank you, guys. Hey, Dana. <laughs> If you, if you didn't, you wouldn't think I'm sick or something. Were you giving me a hard time? I don't know if you were giving me a hard time. <laughs> oh, I see your picture of a crab that you <laughs> up there. I don't know how you found that emoji, but that's uh, pretty good there. Um, Matt, if you think we shouldn't give ourselves a time limit for our drawings, why do you do that? That's a great question, Doug. <laughs> Doug also is giving me a hard time. The reason why... Um, giving myself a time limit on here is kind of the heighten the, the drama a little bit and to make this this segment a little bit more fun if i just said okay guys i'm going to sit down and i'm going to draw a crab and it's going to take me as long as it takes um that would not be very good for uh people watching the video <laughs> Plus, I think it's a good idea to set a time frame right from the beginning because if you know that there, you're only going to be devoting 30 minutes to this, most of us can sit down and devote 30 minutes to something. We'll sit down and we'll watch a TV show for 30 minutes or, or we'll do something for 30. 30 minutes is not a big time commitment. So it also encourages people who wouldn't normally take the time to practice to do it because they know that it's not going to be a big time commit, time commitment. And then once you're in it, you'll find that you go usually a lot longer than you normally would. It's kind of like this, that old thing. There's a, there's kind of a fitness idea that if you just get up and tell yourself to do two push-ups, what happens is you end up doing 10 push-ups because you just, it's the part, it's the process of starting. That's the hard part. So putting a time limit on it like this kind of encourages the folks who aren't going to spend the time to spend the time. And it also makes things a little bit more exciting and dramatic. Uh, so let's see. Don't mess with the Duke. Your live lessons are great. Thanks, uh, David. Please make some videos about how to create your own drawing from your imagination. It's so difficult for me. <laughs> Um, yeah, people who draw well from imagination are people who have spent a lot of time drawing from observation. Drawing is still about observation. Um, and what happens is, let's say I drew 12 crabs. <laughs> I sat down and, and drew 12 different crabs. Well, it, I could sit down and draw another crab from imagination based on my experience of drawing crabs from observation. Um, because I've had experience with that. Um, and that's basically how folks draw from imagination well is because they've had practice drawing from observation. I know that there's a lot of <clears throat> artists out there that draw from imagination. They make it seem really easy to do that. But if you actually talk to those artists or spent time with them, you would know that they have spent lots and lots of time drawing from observation. So if you want to get better at drawing from imagination, then you have to spend time drawing from observation. 
Um, there's not just there's not a quick route to drawing from observation or drawing from imagination without spending time drawing from observation. This is especially true of like if you look at comic artists and folks like that who you know they're drawing a lot of their material from imagination. They're still probably using models and different poses and things as a source of inspiration. So they're still drawing partly from observation, but they've had so much experience as well. So if they have to have a leg in a certain position or whatever they've had experience drawing that uh, in the past and yeah that's a good point there using a reference photo isn't a copy it isn't copying because the my my drawing of a crab doesn't look um, exactly like this photo reference not by any means but when you look at the drawing you can see it, it's a drawing of a crab <laughs> All right, uh, I think that's it here. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, switch over to this camera here. Thank you guys for for watching Getting Sketchy Live this week. I hope you enjoyed uh, the broadcast a little bit longer than normal uh, because I went over, of course. Uh, but if you want to have much longer lessons where we go into great depth with material and media uh, with materials and different subjects. Um, each week for an hour, then you can head over to thevirtualinstructor.com and check out our live lessons, uh, which are part of our membership program, which all starts uh, with a trial for seven days. Uh, so you can go check it out if you haven't already. It, your membership program also includes uh, 12 courses and the 13th course is almost complete. Most of the 13th course has been released to members. Each one of our courses are are very they're very in depth. They're not uh, they're not just typical courses where you'd see one or two demonstrations. We have lots and lots of uh, pieces of art created in each one of the courses, and each of the courses includes video uh, instruction that's logically sequenced, and each course module also includes an ebook with it as well. So, um, and then there's the ultimate lesson plan, a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers, which is also included as part of the membership membership program, and also weekly critiques um, and answered questions, which are part of the members' minute each week. So, there's a ton of stuff that's part of our membership program. There's also a ton of free videos too over on the website at thevirtualinstructor.com. So um, that's enough for me guys. Thanks for uh, for watching this. Thanks for being a part. Remember this is all about having fun and also improving your drawing skills. So I hope you guys have a great evening. With that I'm going to sign out. Good night everybody.